ABC's reporting on Israel has been disgusting. Let me show you. Why is the United States supporting Israel with all the killing done in Gaza? It's a very understandable question. It's one that many people ask uh, from all around the world. You thought that question was bad. Wait until you hear the answer. Of course, there's a large Jewish population as well uh, in the US, which has a big say in elections. And very few politicians want to say anything that, that goes against what they have to say. This is sickening. Jews make up just 1% of America, so claiming that very few politicians would oppose them is such brazen and blatant anti-Semitism. The BBC is responding to the worst anti-Semitic massacre since the Holocaust with an anti-Semitic trope. Why is it that news organisations like the BBC, like ITV, like Sky, like a number of other organisations, do not use the term terrorist when describing Hamas militants? One of the reasons is that when you are broadcasting to a world audience, uh, you want your perceptions, the way that you are, 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 are dealing with the story, not to look as if you are taking any particular side and calling a group a terrorist group. So they appear to be saying that they don't want their viewers to think that they're taking a side against what? This? Predictably, they have no problem calling it terrorism when it's Europeans that are killed. The 2015 Paris terrorist attacks is a suspected Islamist terror attack. British police who shot dead a terrorist. Clearly, they don't seem to have any issue calling it terrorism when it targets Europeans. But then when 1,200 innocent Jews are slaughtered, they refuse to use the word. But wait until you hear why. Uh, many Palestinians just would, I mean, I mean, they would feel, I think, if we described Hamas as a terrorist group, they would feel that that was, in a sense, a kind of total rebuff to them. I mean, they see it as a resistance movement. And They're explicitly telling you why they won't call it terrorism. They won't use that word, as that might offend the people who think it's justified to murder Jews. Outside, as you saw in the piece, there was a woman uh, who was under a, uh, a purple sleeping bag. Uh, one of the soldiers said to me that, uh, an officer said to me that she'd been beheaded. I have to say I did not move the covering to see if he was telling the truth. This gross report is from their international editor, Jeremy Bowen. Now ask yourself, why would any journalist visit this scene and then try and sow seeds of doubt about what they're reporting? It's no wonder that conspiracy theorists are claiming that people haven't been beheaded as the BBC irresponsibly planted this idea. But what he does next is just revolting. After walking past dozens of dead Jews, he approaches a soldier and says this. As you know, all armies have obligations under the laws of war to protect civilian life, even in war zones. Are you doing this with this level of airstrikes that are going on at the moment? The person he's talking to is still processing the horrific scenes he's just witnessed. But this pompous BBC hack thinks it's the perfect time to accuse Israel of not protecting human life. There, at that scene, that's when he asks this question. What makes it even more offensive is in the very report we're watching, his colleague in Gaza exposes how deceitful this line of questioning is. Well, this gentleman just told us that we, had to, we have to leave the, the area because it seems that the Israelis are warning the uh, resident of that area that they should leave. They are going to target another uh, building. Did you catch that? Jeremy Bowen is trying to make an equivalency between the Hamas massacre and Israel's response. Hamas gave no warnings. They went from building to building, slaughtering every civilian that they found. Whereas Israel is warning civilians to leave the buildings that Hamas are based in. 